ever just like find yourself kind of lost in your phone mm -hmm. like i swear i'll go to you know just set my timer for my morning coffee and suddenly somehow i'm like three buzzfeed quizzes deep and i'm late for work yeah it's it's a trip this whole like tech thing you know it really is it's like our devices they almost have this like uncanny ability to just grab our attention and then not let go yeah but the thing is um it, it's not by accident like yeah. There's a whole science behind how technology is actually designed to be so captivating. Uh, so maybe it's not just me. Maybe that I'm is. not just easily distracted. It's it's like a conspiracy or something. A little bit, yeah. But that's kind of what got me thinking about, you know, this whole like digital minimalism thing, yeah. which is what we're diving into today with Laura Bailey's Why and How to Become a Digital Minimalist. Okay. Great book. And, and you know me. I'm all for like a good life hack, but this yeah. isn't about like, you know, chucking our phones in a lake or anything. No, absolutely not. Right. Yeah, Bailey's point is that digital minimalism, it's really not about like swearing off technology completely or <sighs> becoming some kind of like bad hermit, you know? Right. It's more about being mindful and intentional with our tech use. Like, do our devices actually serve us or are we kind of serving them? It's about taking back control. Exactly. And and it's interesting because she talks about this attention economy. Yeah. How our attention is like this commodity mm -hmm. that these tech companies are constantly vying for. Oh, absolutely. Think about just like how social media platforms are designed, right? Yeah. You've got the endless scrolling. Yeah. You've got the notifications. You've got algorithms that are literally like curating content specifically to keep us engaged. Yeah. And and it's all very deliberate. It's it's kind of wild when you actually like stop and think about it. Yeah. Like Instagram. Instagram spaces out your friends' posts so that you just keep scrolling, hoping for another, you know, like dopamine hit. Exactly. And don't even get me started on Facebook. Oh, the rabbit holes. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. And and that's the key, isn't it? Because these platforms, they're designed to tap into those same psychological mechanisms as addiction. So each like each comment, each notification, it triggers this little dopamine rush. Totally. And then, of course, we crave more. And it just feeds that cycle of constant engagement. And it's not even just like the feel good stuff either. Bailey talks about how platforms like Facebook have been known to prioritize negative or controversial content because it just it gets more clicks, more shares, more engagement, more engagement. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little unsettling, to be honest. We're constantly being bombarded by information. Yeah. And a lot of times it is designed to provoke a reaction, you know, keep us glued to our screens. Yeah. No wonder it's so hard to unplug sometimes. Totally. And and in all of this, Bailey talks about her own experience with, you know, feeling overwhelmed by by the constant ping of messages. Like, it hindered her ability to just focus. Right. Which I feel like, you know, we can all relate to that, right? Absolutely. There's real value in disconnecting and creating space for solitude and deep work. I think that's where true creativity, self-discovery, that's where that often happens. So if we're constantly plugged in, are we sacrificing those opportunities? It's a question worth considering. Yeah. When was the last time you truly unplugged, truly disconnected, and just allowed yourself to be present in the moment, free from the distractions of the digital world? That's a good question. I know I'm, I'm due for some serious unplugging, but but that's where Bailey comes in, right? With some practical steps for, for embracing digital minimalism. So she lays out eight steps in total. And, you know, we don't want to bore you with all the details. Yeah, we'll keep it high level. But let's dive into a few that I think are super interesting. Let's do it. One that always kind of like makes people stop and go, whoa, is her 30-day challenge. Yep. Like the idea is you cut out all non-essential technology for a whole month. Oh, wow. It's like hitting the reset button on your your digital life, you know? Okay, I'll admit a whole month offline sounds a little intense, even for me. Yeah. But, I mean, I can see how it would force you to confront your tech habits head on, right? Absolutely. No more, like, scrolling on autopilot. Exactly. It's about breaking free from those ingrained patterns and then, like, you know, rediscovering what you truly value. Right. Now, of course, Bailey also suggests, you know, less less drastic steps. Well, like, simply turning off notifications. Yes. I think that's something we can all, like get behind oh tell me about it i finally i finally took the plunge and i silenced most of my notifications a few months back and it is amazing how much calmer my life is without that that constant ah. buzzing and beeping and oh yeah it's too much it's almost like you're reclaiming a piece of your attention wouldn't you say right 
You're no longer like at the mercy of every ping and notification. You get to decide when and how you engage with your devices. Right. It's like it's like taking a deep breath after being underwater for too long. Yes. Yes. Another point Bailey makes that I thought was really interesting is is this idea of planning leisure time. Oh, interesting. Right. Because it's so easy to just like fall into the trap of, you know, defaulting to our phones whenever we have like even just a free moment. It's almost like we've forgotten how to relax and unwind without them. Totally. But what's fascinating is that Bailey challenges us to be more deliberate about those like in between moments. Mm. So instead of automatically reaching for our phones, what if we engage in activities that actually like genuinely nourish us? Yeah, like what? Things like, oh, I don't know, picking up a book, going for a walk, having a meaningful conversation. Yeah. It's like we've we've almost outsourced our free time to our devices. A little bit, yeah. But but then you think about the things that actually bring us joy. Yeah. You know, that make us feel truly alive and they they very rarely involve staring at a screen. Precisely. It's about aligning our actions with our values. Mm -hmm. Right. If we truly value like creativity or connection or personal growth, shouldn't our leisure time reflect that? Oh, I love that. It's about being intentional, even in our downtime. Exactly. And and speaking of intentionality, Bailey also suggests leaving our phones at home occasionally. Ooh. Now, I know that might not be realistic for everyone, but but I can see how even short periods of disconnection could be incredibly freeing. Absolutely. There's there's a certain sense of liberation that comes mm -hmm. from from not being constantly reachable. Right. It allows you to be fully present in the moment, savor your surroundings, engage more deeply with the people you're with, all without that, like, that distraction of your phone, like, buzzing in your pocket. Right. It's like giving yourself permission to just, like, unplug and be. Exactly. I'm also, I was really intrigued by her suggestion to try calling instead of texting whenever possible. Interesting. Because she argues that it allows for, for richer, more nuanced communication. And it helps us, you know, maintain those essential like face-to-face -face social skills that you know maybe were Wait, that are, they're starting to get a little rusty yeah i think that's a that's a brilliant point because texting is convenient there's no doubt about that mm -hmm. but it can be so easy to misinterpret tone and intention in in written communication right oh yeah a quick phone call can often clear up those those misunderstandings you know much mm -hmm. more effectively and even strengthen our relationships in the process. Totally. It's about it's about making that human connection. Right. Like hearing the inflections in someone's voice, experiencing that that back and forth of a real time conversation. It's true. Those things those things can get lost in translation over text sometimes. Oh, absolutely. And let's not forget her her last point about embracing the the block by default mentality. Yeah, what's that about? So she suggests, you know, proactively blocking distracting websites or apps rather than just relying solely on willpower to to resist them. I love that because it's not about deprivation, right? It's about like being proactive and setting ourselves up for success. Right. We're not relying on willpower alone. We're we're actually like creating an environment that supports our intentions. Exactly. Exactly. It's about removing those digital obstacles that stand between us and, you know, a, a more focused and intentional life. And you know, I think after diving into all of this with Bailey, I realize it's not about becoming like a tech hating minimalist, right? Yeah. It's more about, I don't know, just using technology in a way that aligns with with our values mm -hmm. and our priorities. Yeah. She she reminds us that technology itself isn't inherently, you know, good or bad. Yeah. It's it's a tool. Right. And like any tool, you know, it can be used in ways that enhance our lives or, uh, or detract from them. Yeah. Digital minimalism is about making that distinction and choosing how we want to engage. That's such a powerful takeaway. I, I will say reading this has really got me thinking about making some changes, yeah. even small ones. Like right. I'm I'm very inspired by that that notification detox we were talking yeah. about no. and planning my downtime more intentionally. Love that. Like definitely going to to try that. I love that. Remember, even small changes can have a big impact. Yeah. It's it's about finding what works for you mm -hmm. and then building habits that support a more, you know, balanced, fulfilling life. It's all about finding that sweet spot, right? Yeah. Embracing the amazing things that technology has to offer without letting it, you know, take over. Absolutely. So as you continue to explore digital minimalism, I'll leave you with this. If you can make one small change today to be more intentional about your digital life, what would it be?